he, he was still trying to figure out how to make me happy, how to, how to be my hero. And I wasn't really good at receiving or even stating what I thought I wanted, let alone needed at that time. So then I'm really good at taking self-care off. You know, I raised four kids and worked a full-time job and had a successful business. Um, so I knew how to do things very efficiently. You know, didn't realize I was controlling or making helpful suggestions about with his health issues of, you know, well, your diet should be better. You should, you know, drink this or you should try this supplement. Did everything that all your intimacy skills say not to do. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about four significant ways to make your husband happy. My guest Tracy's marriage felt on the brink of divorce. There was no intimacy or communication. And when she experimented with the six intimacy skills, she was surprised to find out her husband just wanted to make her happy. Today, she's married to the man she hoped to be. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. But first, here are four significant ways to make your husband happy. If you're anything like I was early in my marriage, you don't know any of these four ways to make your husband happy. I didn't know one of them. I thought I could make him happy by doing the things that would make me happy, which is just not the case. That didn't work at all because my husband is so different than me. Even if someone had told me the things that I'm about to tell you about how to make your husband happy when I was newly married, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have believed them. So even though I wanted to make him happy, I didn't know how, and I was doing a bunch of stuff that I thought would make him happy, but felt like a lot of effort and work for me, but was not making him happy at all. In some cases, it made him feel worse than if I hadn't made any effort at all. Then we would fight about it because he didn't appreciate how much I did to make him happy. Let's not both make that mistake. Here are four secrets that most people don't know about how to make your husband happy. Number one, don't do anything to make him happy. When I was getting ready to tell you about these significant ways to make your husband happy, I asked John how happy he is as a husband on a one to 10. I mean, why not fish for a compliment under the guise of creating a podcast, right? Guilty is charged. And he said he's a 10 out of 10 or an 11 out of 10. I mean, why not brag about that compliment that you fished for on your podcast too, right? So I verified that what I'm sharing with you is a significant way to make your husband happy. And I wanted to do that because I realized it might sound as crazy to you as it did to me at first. I'm going to repeat that first significant way to make your husband happy. Don't do anything to make him happy. Instead, make yourself happy. For example, John's birthday was Saturday, and if there's ever a day you want to make your husband feel happy, it's on his birthday, right? So that morning, I went to play volleyball early, which makes me ridiculously happy. And while I was gone, he did the dishes, he put away the laundry, and he cleared out the garage. And when I got home, we got in the spa, which I enjoyed, and then I took a nap, which also made me feel amazing. When it was time to go to my parents for his birthday party, he drove us there while I relaxed some more. I was ridiculously happy. And this is key. So was he. The old me would have thought that I should have done all those chores and the driving too, because it was his birthday. But the new me, who has a much happier husband, knew that doing everything to make myself happy was the best way to make him happy too. The second way to make your husband happy is to thank him for all the ways he makes you happy. Now, to be honest, I'm still uncomfortable with feeling so well taken care of, even on John's birthday. I feel guilty. But instead of exhausting myself with doing things for him the way I did in the bad old days, I used that guilt as a reminder to express my gratitude, which is a little vulnerable to my female brain, thanking him for doing all those tedious things while I played and napped is a risk. 
I was pointing out to him that I didn't give him special treatment on his birthday. And he could have gotten mad about that, which would make me feel even more guilty. But I don't fall for that anymore. On the way home from my parents, I made a list of all the ways, all the things that he did that I appreciated on his birthday. Dishes, laundry, garage clearing, and driving. And I thanked him. He wasn't upset, just the opposite. He was glowing as I thanked him for doing all that. And I got the impression he was also ridiculously happy. And that wasn't just the birthday cake talking, okay? The third significant way to make your husband happy is to let him be your hero. By saying how grateful I was that John had taken care of me and made me feel like a princess on his big day, I let him be my hero. And that means more to him than anything I can do to be his hero. He doesn't want to be a princess. That's me I'm thinking of. Still, it wasn't easy for my brain to get this. I still have trouble understanding that not everyone is like me. Sometimes I get glimpses of it, like when I read how testosterone makes struggling enjoyable. I was like, aha, that explains a lot. For example, when I drove over something that wrecked my tire recently, John couldn't wait to go out in the rain and get my car operational again so he could be my hero, which he did, and he was, but not before I suggested how he could avoid going out in the rain. That didn't land well at all. He just looked confused. So I backed off and I let him enjoy the struggle of fixing my tires. It still seems strange to me that fixing my tire on a rainy day made him so happy, but it did. That is not how I'm wired, but he is. The final secret ingredient to make your husband happy is to be happy to see him. I got this one straight from John. If I'm happy to see him as evidenced by the look on my face, the lilt in my voice, or occasionally taking a running leap into him, he feels good. Sometimes I forget. I get wrapped up in being efficient or I wallow in my guilt that I don't do enough for John. So if I want to do something significant to make him happy, I first remember how happy I am to be married to him, to have my very own hero. When he comes home today, I'm going to let him see that. I have exciting news for you because right now you can listen to my book, The Empowered Wife, for free with your Audible membership in the United States. So discover the six surprising secrets to attract your man's time, his attention, his affection when you listen to The Empowered Wife audiobook on Audible without using credits. You don't need any credits. It's free. The Empowered Wife has over 1,700 five-star reviews. And it also has some one-star reviews too, because not everybody is ready to hear what they can do to fix their relationship without their man even knowing about it. And I get it. I wasn't ready either until my marriage was completely falling apart and we were on the brink of divorce. And then I learned from women with happy marriages what actually works. And now my marriage is shiny and amazing. And those secrets are in this book. And you can listen to the whole book for free with your Audible membership. The only catch is that this Audible deal is only for a limited time. So to make your marriage last and thrive, go and listen for free with your Audible membership right now. My guest Tracy's marriage felt on the brink of divorce. There was no intimacy and no connection. When she experimented with the six intimacy skills, she was surprised to find out her husband just wanted to make her happy. Today, she's married to the man she hoped to be. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. Tracy, thank you for coming on the Empowered Wife podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. So I want to hear the whole story. Tell us about the bad old days. What was happening in your marriage? Not a whole lot of anything good. We had gotten into that pattern of everything was one or another's fault. We weren't on the same page. There was no communication, no connection, intimacy, you know, just just another day on the hamster wheel, I guess would be the shortest version. Mm. Um, of course, 
I drug him to counseling within the first year because, you know, somebody else could fix him. Um, Everyone knows that's what you got to do. Right. And of course, you know, that worked really well. Um, I bought your book actually about seven years ago. Yeah. Um, Read it. Started applying the whatever you think. Whatever you think. Um, he did not like that at all. Made him very angry. Um, as a matter of fact, his exact quote was, I don't like it when you say that. Will you stop saying that to me? Well, whenever you look back, it was really because he he was still trying to figure out how to make me happy. How to, how to be my hero. And I wasn't really good at receiving or even stating what I thought I wanted, let alone needed at that time. So, you know, we continue through these years of the same patterns, you know, um, I, that must've been painful though. You were using the skills and it didn't work and you didn't right. know why. And you just thought, well, here's something else. It just, it doesn't work. Right. So I put the book back on the shelf and like, of well, of course, you know, um, drug him to counseling again, several years later. And here we are. Um, when I decided to jump into the program again, we were at that most miserable state, probably, you know, had come to the conclusion that, all right, nothing else has worked. You know, all the podcasts I'd listened to on marriage and sent to him that he didn't listen to. Uh, we would get in that cycle of, I would hear, you never listen to me. You never hear me. What I think doesn't matter. You don't care. You know, it was just a very um, frustrating, lonely, miserable place. Um, so then I'm really good at taking self-care off. You know, I raised four kids and worked a full-time job and had a successful business. Um, so I knew how to do things very efficiently. You know, didn't realize I was controlling or making helpful suggestions about with his health issues of, you know, well, your diet should be better. You should, you know, drink this or you should try this supplement. Did everything that all your intimacy skills say not to do and didn't even realize I wasn't being helpful. You know, yeah, you didn't like, know that whatever, no, no one ever told. In fact, you could, were getting rewarded. I'm sure for managing the house with folks, four kids and your own business and the full-time job. I mean, that's the, that's how you were successful in those arenas, right? By being efficient, right. being able to solve all the problems. Right. And, um, you know, we had gotten in that phase where I feel like we were both just sitting on the fence of, you know, ending the relationship, but neither wanted to be the one to do it. Um, you know, like you said, being efficient in those areas, I found myself doing more and more, um, self-care would be the first thing off. So when I pulled the book back out, when I was like, all right, trying this and convinced it wasn't going to work, like nothing else has worked. There's no way I've tried some of this before, but I decided to give it a go. And, um, I can remember feeling like, because if my mouth would keep shut, my face says it all usually. So the duct tape, applying the duct tape was kind of like on everything, you know? You needed a whole face and I, duct tape, not just a... I did. Uh, actually, I, did. I relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. My face is very transparent too. Yeah. And he even had made a comment or two in the beginning. He's like, how's come you're not saying anything? Like, I can't even tell by your face what you're thinking. And I'm like... <gasps> Whatever oh. you think. Yeah, it was. <laughs> You're it doing was really, it. It was funny. So, you know, the first week I was Were really like, good. At, <laughs> like, you just know. Oh, I couldn't <laughs> find a reason to exit stage left quick enough because I had to regroup. Um, <laughs> and so I started with the self-care stuff. And then just as normal, very quickly fell back off of it. Like. And it does affect you way more than you want to realize, you know, and then still asking for what 
made me happy and staying on my page was kind of where, so I was just silent for the first several weeks, you know, showed up using some of those. I hear you, you know, because I think in every relationship, you've got one that's more positive and one that's, um, I don't want to say necessarily negative, but focuses down that, that route. And I am not the one that goes down that route. So it was previously hard to not have an expression to, here we go again, the mansplaining, the, you know, and so I just got really good at applying. Hmm. I'm sure that was really difficult or I'm sure that was really terrible today. And I really had no opinion otherwise. Wow. And then anybody that knows me, that was um, probably the most difficult along with the self-care, you know, and being able to say what I wanted without feeling like I didn't deserve it. So if we were just, if we just dropped into your house, like a fly on the wall, we'd be like, wow, Tracy had a personality transplant or something. Cause she's literally, like, literally. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is very, very different. And so, and he must've been like, what is going on? He did. He called, he was like, why, why aren't you saying yes. anything? What's happening yes. here? You're suspicious. Yes. Yes. Very suspicious. So there was a little bit of change to start with, you know, in, the evening interactions instead of totally avoiding one another, you know, doing our own stuff around here. And then it got to the part in the program about the apology. And so I just kept typing different topics that would come to mind throughout the day, you know, which ended up being a very long, lengthy apology. Really? Yeah. Now, yes. I just have to ask about this because, uh, <clears throat> I mean, apologizing, I mean, it, it didn't sound like you thought it was your fault that this no. tension was happening, but now you're not only thinking of apologizing, you've got kind of a long list. What, like, what happened there? Well, when you realize you've not been on your page, there becomes a whole lot of things that you can clear the air about, you know? And yes, even though... I took my own ownership in it. Not that none of it was my fault, but without, with not knowing what I was setting into motion by not accepting, being able to receive, to state what I wanted without expectations. Um, and that hero gene, I'm like, what are you talking about? So it didn't seem like your husband had a hero gene. Correct. Okay. Or that like, I could ignite it, like, because I was so independent and so yeah. capable. Yes. Efficient. Yeah. And figuring out how to relinquish that control that I didn't realize that I had or needed yeah. was quite eye opening. So that apology started with all kinds of things. I mean, simple things, so forth. I was going to do it in person. I was obviously going to have to read it because it was so long and it didn't work out. So yeah, what I happened? forget what happened that evening. Just, it just didn't work out. And What's so I ended right up time? text. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So I ended up sending it the next day when he was at work by text, which is not necessarily in our situation. It works well because he kind of needs time to digest. Most men do, but you know, sure. Sure. It was in writing was, too, which is kind of cool. Right? Like in case he wants not. to read it again. Or not. Right. Uh -oh. Okay. Okay. Carry I mean, on. No, no. <laughs> good for him. But you know, for women, it, it puts that vulnerability out there a little more because it is in writing. It is in black Absolutely. and white. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very, very vulnerable. Yes. And his response to me was, wow, I don't even know what to say to that. Other than thank you. And then he immediately sent another one that said, you really didn't need to apologize for way over half of that. I'm like, well, thank you. But I felt that I did, oh. you know, just in some self-reflection. Oh. Yeah. So, okay. So, and the, and the text said something along the lines, what, what did, I mean, give us a, I just spelled out, um, Sorry for ever having an opinion on how your diet or what your health priorities should be. 
sorry I ever made your follow-up doctor appointments um, for having an opinion on your drinking. Just you name it. It was out there. That's very yes. accountable. Tracy, that's amazing. We do a lot of remodeling projects. So, of course, I was the project manager. So, you know, that was in the, you know, apology. There was just a whole lot of areas whenever you I stepped back I was like, ah, you know, I mean, he felt like he could do nothing. He could do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, like how it was at our house. I mean, did this seem fair to you that you would uh, say sorry for all that? To start with when I was first listening to the podcast and taking notes. No, I was yeah. like, not, not happening. Yeah. Right. But, you know, as I kind of reflected back and re-listened and, then just things started coming to me and I'm like, all right. I decided that I was all in giving this a try. So if I don't, that's not all in. Wow. You want, so you wanted to take accountability for these things. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's impressive. That's very well, my ego got in the way a lot well, in my mind, <laughs> you know, well, a couple of times I didn't show up like so it. dignified. <laughs> Um, stumbled, had to apologize for that then after. But the follow-up of after sending the text, he actually, and he's, he doesn't want to follow up on topics. You know, the, the pile under the road can get very large. But he actually brought it up when he got home. And we actually had a conversation in person. Which, you know, was just not the usual or wasn't the usual for, for us. And, um, he even took ownership of some of those things that he felt I didn't need to apologize for that were his issues, which was a first. And so as I went on in the program, you know, he, he felt safe, I guess, to finally share some of those instead of always it's you, it's you, or if you'd have done this, or if you wouldn't have done that, or, you know, that hum and duct tape was working really well. Yeah. And then I had had a couple of coaching sessions with, with Sue and, um, you know, we had talked about that duct tape and being quiet through some of it is a normal phase whenever you're having a personality transplant. So, it, it, you know, it was a process. It was not, I'm not going to sit there and claim that it was easy and I felt like a fraud and that I was manipulating a lot. And I had worked really hard on just being a direct person so that it, yeah. you didn't have to think about it. What I meant is what I said. And you know how well that works. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of value. I mean, you were, you were an authentic person. It sounds like. I was, uh, I was right? too authentic. And, well, too authentic. Okay. Okay. I hear you. I mean, it, it wasn't always serving you. It sounds like to say exactly what you were thinking. And so. Correct. Um, but you, but manipulation never feels good either. And this, and this kind of felt like that at first is what I'm hearing. For and sure. That's not, not kind of, not kind of. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like I'm totally yeah. being manipulative here. And yes. in a way, I mean, when he came home and was accountable himself after you apologized, that, that must've made you feel like a million bucks. Like, okay. Like he's also right. I mean, that's, we all kind of long for those, those apologies to come. Right. So, the, but, but not at the expense of it being manipulative, maybe, maybe not a good trade, right? Is that? That's kind of where it felt. Yeah. 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 So how did you handle that? I kept my mouth shut and I just kept practicing the skills, like the, the self-talk of it's not, I'm, I'm being genuine, just less straightforward, you know, which was showing him more respect. Um, and it kept us from engaging in the blame or the withdrawal and the cold wars. And then all of a sudden, when I would slip, you know, sure. I would have an opinion and be like, eh. Um, then all of a sudden we were having a lot more heartfelt conversations and we're in the middle of a remodel project. And he would be like, 
and I work just as hard as most men in doing that because I, you know, want to be sure I'm contributing. <clears throat> and I had started doing um, some red light therapy and stuff at a place locally. It's like, why don't you just go, you know, do this and this? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to, no, I'll get that. And I'm like, okay. So it was my own guilt of being able to actually go. But also, he was pretty good at keeping score of whether I was doing my part before. So this was a different side that I was totally caught off guard on. And so uh, lots of different scenarios around that happened. Um, and I was getting better at, you know, I would love X, Y, Z. You know, and it would just happen. And and I can remember when I realized that hero gene was a thing. It was like literally a conversation. A tool went, quit operating. It was this whole almost fiasco. And anyways, he ended up saying, well, all I ever want to do is make you happy. Oh, it felt gosh. really good to be able to be your hero. He said that to you? Quote, unquote. The man that didn't have a hero gene? Correct. That one. Did you fall yeah. over and faint? <laughs> like, oh, no. I'm pretty sure that duct tape did not work at that time. <laughs> and then, and, and all these projects, you know, like there's always been this push-pull, like, we wouldn't speak during the projects most of the time, you know, you work eight work. hours at something. Oh, yeah. and not even knowing it, just oh. no real interaction. And then all of a sudden that shifted to where we were laughing and joking and even dancing in the tour apart room. And I'm like, huh, huh, all over that hero gene. Like I said, I, I had decided I was all in, stumbled many, 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 many times. This wasn't my first marriage, so I knew the common denominator was me. So I've done a lot of, you know, accountability and stuff, but never really to that. We had the conversation of, well, I just didn't think you really needed me. Hmm. Because I was so independent. And to be able to accept and receive was, I think, the the real shift. And it's been quite shocking. This just melted you, though. Did you just, I mean, I have chills just hearing him want to be your hero. That's all he ever yeah. wanted. Yeah. It must have made you feel so good. It did. And, and of course, like, I didn't trust it to start with. Sure. Now you were suspicious, too. Like, wait a minute. You, you weren't doing this before. Right eight years and this is never mm, yeah, it, I, I was very suspicious so it was very fascinating that that self or spouse fulfilling prophecy on what we focus on and think about and our energy we put off whenever we get very suspicious it can quickly switch back and maybe not to the same extreme in the in the old patterns and and that distance, but it's a very quick shift. And then I think the more you pay attention and recognize, the more, the quicker I could shift my own back and be more thankful and appreciative in a way that he actually received it. And so then it made you a little less suspicious. Um, if that so, makes sense. I mean, it does. It does. So it sounds like it was a superpower you just didn't know you had. And then once you found it, you were able to switch into it pretty quick. Yes. To, to be receptive and uh, respectful. I mean, I really hear you were using all the skills, it sounds like. Like, I, I think I've heard all of them now, including spouse fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Oh, what, yes. What kinds of uh, spouse fulfilling prophecies did you did you come up with for him? He's always been a patient man with everybody but me. So the new one became that he was going to be patient with me. 
So you're you're always so patient with me or something like that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate wow. how you're, you know, when I don't and then, you know, even if I understood a specific task we were working on, I listened more and was still less. I know, I know I got it. You know, which I did still have it, but just changing my reaction around that kind of spouse fulfilling prophecy. Because then he felt like he was fixing or supplying with answers, you know, which falls into that hero gene that I didn't realize was such a connection. Yeah. So it became more important to you to receive his help than it was to just like save his breath and get on with it as it had been before. Correct. And I didn't realize how many that's just my personality type save yeah. your breath i got it if i don't yeah. i'll come ask questions right you know. right 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 I, I yeah i can handle this yeah. yeah yeah and so it sounds like i mean you're no less confident of course uh or smart than you were before but you you get more help than you were getting before how is that oh it's nice it's it's, it's nice. nice i mean we still got a lot of areas where he doesn't want the control. That's fine. It'll either come in time or it'll stay on my page. Um, but I've figured out and can figure out a little quicker what is really on my page. Because it's very, as humans, even though, even through going through the course and practicing and rereading and, you know, it's very easy to veer off that real quick and let those lines mesh together oh no that's on my page yeah yeah exactly that's gonna affect me <laughs> yes it doesn't go not right that it doesn't but yeah yeah you know yeah there's quite an argument to be made i yeah I, i've made those arguments to myself too so yes and <laughs> and to him many times like in the past <laughs> right right yeah. right and i mean we're laughing about it now but um it seems Deadly serious when you're in the middle, especially like a remodel project. You're thinking if this doesn't get done, that's going to affect me and I'm going to have to live with this messy project longer or whatever. Uh, so it can seem really urgent. So um, so is it is it your experience now that he is more patient with you? Oh, yes. Yes. We've probably only had two instances in, what, four months? where the patience wasn't there. And that's, I mean, it used to be three, four times a week, you know, like that pattern. So yes, he is. Um, wow. That, but he does want to make me happy. I didn't think that, I didn't realize that was a thing within that hero gene, you know? Yeah. Because I had, you know, it's, it's our job to make ourselves happy, right? Absolutely. I mean, isn't that, it you is. know, that's, that's and, true too. Yeah. But, but, um, like you had said, that is like oxygen to them, feeling respected and that they are making us happy. It's been probably the biggest game changer. And I, like I said, for me, it wasn't natural. It wasn't easy. So, I mean, I know that I got miraculous results by applying those skills. But there was a lot of internal conversation with myself. I bet. Let's hear some of that. Like, what were you saying to yourself? You know, well, what if I do this and it doesn't work? Yeah. Well, or what's the point in doing that? This is stupid. Or this is stupid. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. giving up my, you know, you think you're giving up your own power and voice. Yeah. Yeah. And it was that voice that, you know, was a little too loud. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so do you feel like you've given up power now? No, initially no. I did. Yeah, initially, initially yeah. I'm, yeah, right? you know, and I think that, I think that that was kind of my misconception in the beginning that that's really what it was that I was that damsel in distress, and because I don't, I, I, I obviously don't have the personality type to even pretend to be that person. It's just, you know, right. changing that thought process and that internal dialogue around what being open and vulnerable means is what made the, I think the biggest difference. Yeah. And, uh, and vulnerability is, you know, to this day, still uncomfortable, I think. Yeah. Um, 
but uh yeah but like you i love the connection that it creates and the closeness and it and it still feels like it's authentic because i still am just a mere mortal woman correct yeah. correct yeah yeah okay so um how so has he changed no, I've probably been the one to change. Okay, you changed. All right. And he's I just... mean, he he really has. Um, he is less guarded, more open. Um you can tell neither of us feel like we're walking on eggshells anymore. And, you know, we both have a tendency to overthink things. And so we just real quickly kind of bring that back now. Um, so yes, I mean, he really has, but I have also, it, it's more, I think with the actions or not actions that I'm, have been practicing that has made the biggest difference. Yeah. And so, um, and, and so how are you different now? I receive better. I receive compliments. I receive help. Uh, You're getting compliments from him, huh? Yeah. That was not a thing either. That wasn't a thing? What kinds of compliments? I mean, even from as simple as you look nice or you look oh. beautiful. Like, that just wasn't a thing. Oh. Um, the receiving help was probably the biggest. I mean, I don't care if it's carrying in the groceries. I got it. You know, and I don't, you know. So, I, I really do think that did shift the how I'm showing up. Perhaps. Yeah, I may be able to do it, but I don't have to do it all. You don't have to do it all. So you're less exhausted, probably. Oh, for sure. I've taken more naps in the past four months than maybe my whole life. You're a napper now. I would not. not have, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have pegged you for a napper. Never had been. Previously. 10 minute power naps. 10 minute power okay. naps. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you get your infrared therapy while he's handling construction stuff, it yeah. sounds like. and. Yes. So you're kind of this more relaxed, taking care of woman. Yes. Yeah. And I think I'm also picking up like more confidence. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yes, for sure. Wow. For cool. sure. Because you don't realize when you're in that, um, when you, especially after so many years, you know, you, you do lose the, your confidence in ways that you don't really realize is impacting you until you kind of start to come out of that. You know, I'm just really struck by how much you had to overcome as far as like you picked up the book and you tried whatever you think and it just didn't work. And then, uh, the right, you know, and you read some of the other stuff and it, it's so counter to where you lived, um, before this. And then even that apology you texted, he was like, you didn't need to do that. The half of it, right. There was so much friction for you against you using intimacy skills in your marriage. And Correct. yet you just persevered. You're just like, I'm doing this. I'm all in. Mm -hmm. I think it's just incredible. Like, where did you get that determination? I had decided that if, if I didn't see significant changes within, in, I think I signed up for two months. And if I didn't apply and see the changes, then we were we were going to just separate, go our separate ways. And so that's where the determination come from is if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I may not want to, you know, I may not want to change my way of thinking, but everything else wasn't working. So what did it hurt? Wow. Wow. Well, I just love that you put a hundred percent and I could just really hear it and everything you're describing, how uh, dedicated you were to giving this a fair shot just to see how it works. So, um, so what's it like now? I mean, is, is splitting up still on the table or no, no. Um, I had even printed out the divorce papers, you know, online. So yeah, they was went in the trash. Um, They're in the trash. <laughs> We, I, you know, we just, um, we finally changed that dance. Yeah. yeah. You know, and not that there's not been, you know, moments of one or the other pulling away or, you know, very easily to go back into those old patterns. Sure. You know, being human and 
but we both very quickly come back out of those. Like, you know, have decided to have some simple little catchphrase that's not seeming attacking or that, the, you know, either of us seem to take anything personal, but just like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing that thing again. Is that what you so, said? That's your catchphrase? I'm doing that thing yeah. again? Yep. Yep. That is or so cool. are you doing that thing again? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You can even, all right. So like, oh, we're, book, we're going back to our old dance is what I yes. hear you saying. And the way to kind of interrupt it is to say, um, are you going back? Are you doing that old, that, what did you say? That old you, thing that, again. That old thing again. You're, are you doing yeah. that old thing again? Am I doing that old thing again? Yeah. Yes. And that was his suggestion, you know, whenever in one of the conversations, you know, because we didn't have conversations before about stuff. We did, but, you know, it was mostly me talking and him like, said no woman ever, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I hope. I hope. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, and I said, well, I don't know. What do you think? Like, what do you think? Do you have any suggestions? And he was the one that actually came up with that. And I'm like, oh, this is working. Oh, because before gosh. it would have been, no, I don't know. I don't know. So, wow. So you were open. But, so that's a little bit of a full circle moment because you first started saying whatever you think. And he hated when you said that. And then mm -hmm. you, uh, in this context of, trying to connect said, yeah, you know, what do you think? Which is pretty much the same, right? And you yes. came up with a suggestion that you both uh, really value. And could implement very easily. Implement. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So cool. So, but that uh, is the shortened of, you know, all of, all of that lovely misery that, you know, before you just, before I decided to, to kind of change and try this route. So I thank you so much for those skills, even though most of us, I shouldn't say most, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but we most think it's um, a totally foreign concept. Yeah. I, I still remember. They seem crazy to me. So yeah, it's kind of fun to remember that with you, <laughs> like how nutty they well, seem and I, to me. <laughs> and I talked to a friend of mine about it, you know, and I've, you know, she's been married for 20, almost 30 years probably. And and so she had picked up the book. And so she's like, I've got a question. She goes, does that not feel manipulative and not authentic? And I'm like, I was there. Bingo. Like, yeah. 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 And so I just asked her the same thing. Was the other stuff working? She's like, good point. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so good does, point. It, does it still feel manipulative to you now? No, 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 no. I'd say, it, I, to be honest, it probably took me three weeks to not feel like I was being manipulative. Yeah. So you just had but to whenever you're pretty good at not asking for help or stating what makes you happy. Yeah. I think that's probably part of it too. So there's, um, there's plenty of discomfort. It takes courage. It takes courage to do this. Right? Yeah, that it did. Yeah. And you didn't want to be called out for being manipulative, right? Like if he would have said something, are you right. trying to manipulate me? You would have been like, you would have just got up in a, you know, in a pillar of smoke or something right there. Right. And just been so Right. Right. Or would have definitely not showed up very dignified. I'm sure. It's my <laughs> right. defense. Yeah. 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 You might've felt defensive about it. So. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I just love that you just decided to keep going, even though it was super uncomfortable. And now here you are. Now, um, you mentioned you have four kids. And mm -hmm. um, how old are your kids? Uh, 31, 29, 26, and 24. So okay. they're all out of the house. They're all growing All over out. the place. Okay. Yep. So do you think this affected them in any way? Um, probably not so much now, at, like in this moment. But I think over time, for sure. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like it's uh like it might just even if it's just like you mentioned that the environment in your home feels more comfortable and relaxed and playful. Correct. Correct. So that's that might be one way that they feel the difference. It sounds like. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love that. And um, what is your tip for somebody 
who is where you were and has the divorce papers printed out and just is tired of it being, you know, first of all, she's exhausted and tired of everything uh, being on her. And there's just kind of this constant low level tension where there's no, there's no real connection, no real intimacy. And she wants what you have now where, where it's playful and he just wants to be her hero. What's your, what's your advice for her? Where should, where should she start? What should she do? She should definitely start with the skills. And when you find yourself stumbling right away, get right back on track because practice does make it easier, whether it's in thoughts or in action or in keeping our mouth and face together. Um, and if you've tried everything else, but this, you know, your quote, I don't mean to overuse it, but you didn't know what you didn't know. And that was where I found myself in so many of those skills was somebody could have told me that, well, you're showing disrespect, but I, I would have, no, I'm not. So just actually, you know, open, receptive, get yourself a coach. I, I do feel like that really helped a lot um, with just kind of sparking that you're not being manipulative or wherever you're feeling uncomfortable with the skills. Because it's not like you go down dredging up every detail. It's just kind of brings more awareness back to you a little quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Well, what, what would you say to Tracy if you could go back in time and just tell her what you know now? I would have stuck with the program, the book applications seven years ago. And I would have, you know, saved myself seven years of um, a lot of misery an internal conflict. Oh. That's what I would have yeah, oh. done different. I mean, I just feel so connected to you right now. That's such a vulnerable thing to say. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm, um, I'm frustrated for you that, you know, you didn't have a good experience when you first started, right? It was, it's not your fault. Like you tried and it just, you didn't know what, what you didn't know, as you've said. See? So, um, yeah, but I mean, it's, uh, yeah, great answer. Great answer. Like I just hear you saying, I I wish I would have known sooner. And I remember feeling that so strongly too. I wish I would have known this sooner. I wish I didn't waste all those years. I gave up instead of continuing to apply. I just, I I gave up and resorted back to, you know, what I knew. So not that it didn't work. I didn't apply it long enough to, for I put the book on the shelf and quit making it applicable in my daily life. I mean, I mean, I don't think you had any reason to be hopeful that it was going to change at that point, right? You just, there wasn't enough to hang on to. And I think just, we all need to, to see a light at the end of the tunnel if you're going to keep doing something. So uh, I get it. And I, I mean, I just think it's, that's such a valuable thing for you to share because there's uh, uh, somebody listening right now who's thinking the same thing. Yeah, my husband hates it when I say whatever you think. Or he says, when I apologize, he says, you don't need to do that. Uh, yeah. Or it's I, he doesn't have a hero gene, all the things that you're saying, right? So right. Uh, so you're inspiring. You are uh, really giving us a, 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 the opportunity to see what happens when you just choose determination and continue to stay with it, uh, So which is great. So you're providing the exact hope that you didn't have seven years ago. There was no podcast at that time, right? There was no right, uh, right. opportunity to get uh, to hear from somebody else who was having the same experience. That's so correct. I just appreciate that so much. But And I do want to give you, Tracy, my Best Wife Award. Best Wife. Thank you. Congratulations. You Thank saved you. your marriage. It's incredible, right? I mean, this is... Um, so many relationships are falling apart. And you took the road less traveled to make your marriage not just it's not just surviving you know it's playful right right which is way better than just surviving yeah yeah there's connection and intimacy now i hear and And that's within four months so i can only imagine how it'll 
continue to improve. Yeah. Yeah. The future is bright. The future is bright. And you did that. And I just consider it the biggest accomplishment. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for sharing and coming on and just sharing it all with us because um, it really does uh, feed me. And I know so many listeners too, to get to hear about your incredible transformation and, and especially how easy it is to make that switch now that you're familiar with your superpowers. Right. Right. It was a lot easier than I thought. And like I said, you get in your own way, but it's a lot easier the more you practice it to bring them back in. Yeah. And that's just part of the adventure we're on is the illusion is it's going to be hard and heavy and awful. And um, instead it, it turns out to be kind of fun and light and, uh, and, and we get that, yeah. we get that out of yeah. your story. So, yeah. so thank you so much, Trace. This is Well, great. thank you. Thank you. According to a study at Harvard, and this was horrifying to hear, if you know a couple who's getting divorced, you are 75% more likely to get divorced too. Woo. It matters who you listen to, which is why over 7,000 women like you who think that having a great marriage is important have joined our free Adored Wife group. The Adored Wife group is a launch pad where you can meet our certified coaches and discover the best next steps for making your marriage last and thrive. It's 100% free to join. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now. This is a private group. And it's not for everybody, but if you are a wife or girlfriend who thinks that having a great marriage is important too, we'd all really like to meet you. So go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now to join us free. That's lauradoyle.org slash group. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, I'm going to discuss what to do when your husband would rather drink too much than be with you. I'm going to reveal the three-step cure. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is I've been doing a lot of resistance training. Five days a week, I resist going to the gym. 